And I started my period at the age of 13. Nobody ever told me that it would be accompanied with such great pain. Mummy and mom had told me that, you know, they'd seen women and young girls suffer in pain due to menstruation, but not the kind of pain they had seen me battle, not the kind of pain they had seen me struggle with. At age of 15, mom and mommy decided to take me to the gynecologist. And the gynecologist said, you know, um, whatever Jambi is going through is very normal. And, you know, the pain will go away once she gets a child. And I was like, when am I going to get a child? Like, okay, I'm 15. So when do I get a child? So I grew up knowing it was normal. And that coupled with an identity crisis, high school was rough. Rough, extremely rough. And the pain was worse. And I, I had no clue. I had no idea what, you know, what, what this was. And I graduated from high school and I made it to university. My years at Desta University were brutal. The pain was immense. I graduated from Desta and later on joined uh, different media houses and my health was deteriorating. I was getting worse by the day. So I was diagnosed with endometriosis. And endometriosis is a disease where tissue that normally lines the uterus grows out, outside of the uterus. It's a very painful disease, tremendous, I call it apocalyptic pain. And one of the major symptoms is painful periods that I've battled for the last 21 years. I had to stop reading news because the endometriosis was sporadically spreading all over my body. In 2016, there was a major retrenchment at a private media house I was working in and I lost my job. And I came back home to find Mami extremely sick. Two weeks later, Mami was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, stage four. It broke my heart to see Mami silent, weak. My biggest life coach is now the weakest. You know, she'd lost, she'd lost that fire, she'd lost that mojo. And the cancer was spreading. And in, 20, in March 2016, Mami asked us to let her go. Later on, after we buried Mami, I went back to USIU to complete my third degree. And after eight years, I graduated with collapsed lungs with my third degree. I had no idea what I was going through. And so this also was the beginning of a long medical journey for Jambi Koikai. I was finally diagnosed with thoracic endometriosis, endometriosis adenomyosis stage four by my gynecologist, Dr. Praful Patel, and uh, my cardiothoracic surgeon, Dr. Morris Muhinga. And in the words of Dr. Praful Patel, who looked at me straight in the eye and said, Jambi Koikai, you need to leave this country as soon as possible because there's absolutely no doctor, no specialist in this country, not in this continent who could help you or who could solve this problem. And I said to myself, what is this? What is thoracic endometriosis? What is endometriosis? What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? What am I, how am I going to do this? We have no money. You know, we've just come from a mis a medical issue. And now here I am with this grave disease. And the cost of treatment was out of this world. So I called my musician friends in the industry and we organized major concerts. Strangers came through to help with the logistics, with the planning, with the organizing, and everything that went through. My friends in the media came through with the interviews and the promos and the posters and everything in terms of marketing and advertising. And my friend Gilad, he also came and performed, and it was such a magical experience. I was 36 kilograms, and by the time I was being diagnosed by Dr. Praful Patel, I had gone through 18 surgeries. To be scared, I was not. We raised the much needed amount. And in March 2018, we finally arrived at the Center for Endometriosis Care in Atlanta, Georgia, under the care of Dr. Ken Sinavo and Dr. John Goldman. I went through the first major surgery, March 1st, 2018, and I was later placed under isolation for over a month. And then we, I, I, I developed complications and I went through another surgery. And in 2019, January of 2019, we were planning to come home and I developed um, major complications in my right lung and I had to go through another surgery. This was it. I was tired. This is surgery number 21. I am tired. I have gone through it. I, I was tired. And I was like, God, 
I've fought and I've fought and I've fought and it doesn't seem like it's getting better. Throughout this whole ordeal, I never cried. This was the first time I cried. And I cried not because of the pain, I cried because this process was not ending. And I was, I was, I was mentally out of it. And so we went in through the surgery and I was taken to the operating room and they put in a tube as they would normally do to drain out the fluid in my lungs. And after two hours, the nurse came back and said, we have to take you back to the operating room, Jambi, because the tube that was fitted was not big enough. So I was taken back. And all this time, by the way, I can feel everything, eh? I can feel everything. So I was taken back. They put back the tube. Um, and this tube was put back for a process known as pleurodesis, whereby they inject medication to create a buffer zone between your lung and your diaphragm.